Imagine a world where one ruler possesses absolute control and decision-making power. This isn't a dystopian novel, but a form of governance that has existed since the dawn of civilization and persists even today. In the realm of autocracy, the spectrum is vast and varied, from absolute monarchies where the mantle of power is inherited, to dictatorships where power is seized through revolution or force. These autocratic rulers have unchallenged authority, and dissent is seldom on the table. The autocratic form of government is often associated with totalitarian regimes, where civil liberties are curtailed or controlled, and the public is manipulated through indoctrination and propaganda. The ruler's power is absolute, limited only by practical considerations to preserve the regime. These rulers, be they kings, queens or dictators, hold the reins of power firmly in their grasp, shaping their nations as per their vision, unchecked and unopposed. Now, let's see how autocracy compares to other forms of government. In stark contrast to autocracy, democracy represents power of the people. Where autocracy is a singular rule, democracy is a chorus of voices. In an autocracy, one ruler holds absolute control. Like Sauron, autocracy is like the one ring to rule them all. The ruler's will is the law, and dissent is not tolerated. This could be a king or queen in an absolute monarchy, which is not so common anymore, or a dictator seizing power through force or revolution, which happens a fair amount. The autocrat represses civil liberties and maintains power through repression and co-optation. For instance, North Korea under Kim Jong-un is often cited as a contemporary example of this form of government. Democracy, on the other hand, is a system where power is vested in the people. They elect representatives who make decisions on their behalf. In a democracy, the power of the government is not absolute, but is limited by laws that protect the rights and freedoms of the people. An example of this is the United States, where power is divided among three branches of government, the executive, legislative, and judicial. Here, the voice of every citizen matters and is heard. In autocracies, the people have little to no say in the matters of the state. The autocrat decides which liberties can be exercised, often leading to the repression of civil liberties. In contrast, democracies are characterized by the freedom to express dissent, the right to a fair trial, and the freedom of the press, among others. The people in democracies have the power to change their government through elections, thereby ensuring that power does not remain concentrated in the hands of a select few. In autocracy, stability and order are often prioritized over individual freedoms. In democracy, the emphasis is on upholding individual rights and ensuring equality among citizens. This seems to fail more often in the modern society. While democracy thrives on freedom and equality, autocracy thrives on control and absolute power. Both systems have their strengths and weaknesses, and understanding these differences is key to understanding the complexities of governance and power. Feudalism, a system less discussed, yet it contrasts significantly with autocracy. Now, what exactly is feudalism? In essence, it's a socio-political system that was prevalent in medieval Europe. Unlike autocracy, where power is centralized, feudalism is characterized by a decentralization of power. Imagine a pyramid with the king at the top. The king would grant lands known as fiefs to his most trusted lords or vassals. These vassals, in turn, would provide military service to the king and further divide their lands among lesser lords, creating a complex hierarchy of power. Thus, while the king was technically at the top, power was dispersed among numerous lords and nobles, each with their own sphere of influence. Contrast this to autocracy, where power lies solely in the hands of one individual. There is no dispersion of power, no complex hierarchy of lords and vassals. Instead, there is a single ruler, with total control over its citizens. Dissent is often met with swift and harsh punishment. To illustrate, let's consider two historical examples. In medieval England, King Henry II ruled over a feudal society. Despite being the king, he had to constantly negotiate with his vassals to maintain control. Fast forward a few centuries to Soviet Russia where Joseph Stalin, the autocratic ruler, did what he wanted and punsied whomever rised against him. Each system has its own strengths and weaknesses, and both have played significant roles in shaping the course of human history. Feudalism may seem like a system of the past, but its elements and influences can still be seen in modern societies. Autocracy, like any other system, has evolved over time. 
From the pharaohs of ancient Egypt to the emperors of Rome, autocracy has been a long-standing form of governance. It began with absolute monarchies where power was passed down through bloodlines. Kings and queens ruling with an iron fist were the norm. These monarchs had absolute control with their word being the law. But as societies evolved, so did the face of autocracy. The age of monarchies gave way to dictatorships. These autocrats, unlike monarchs, did not inherit their power. Instead, they seized it, often through force or revolution. Their rise was typically marked by political unrest and turmoil. Regardless of the form it takes, autocracy has always been characterized by the absolute power wielded by its leaders. Autocrats often have control of military power, which works as a threat to the opposition. They maintain their power by repressing any dissent and co-opting key institutions like the military and the central bank. Autocrats often shape the opinion to the people and stifle opposition. Over time, some autocracies have adopted elements of democracy to give the appearance of inclusivity. They've established legislatures, conducted show trials and even held elections. But don't let these democratic trappings fool you. The power still rests firmly in the hands of the autocrat. Although Russia is officially a democracy, this autocratic description often suits Putin's rule in Russia. Autocracy's evolution has been marked by adaptation. Autocracy comes from the ancient Greek auto, which means self, and kratos, which means power og might. Autocracy may attempt to legitimize itself in the eyes of the public through appeals to ideology, religion, birthright, or foreign hostility. Some autocracies establish legislatures, unfair elections or show trials to further exercise control while presenting the appearance of democracy. Autocracy's evolution shows the system's adaptability and persistence throughout history. Today, autocracy continues to evolve, blending traditional elements with modern techniques to maintain control. Autocracy is not without its challenges, both internally and externally. One might wonder if an autocrat possesses absolute power. What hurdles could they possibly face? The reality is, the path of autocracy is packed with obstacles, which are often overlooked yet are significant. Internally, one of the primary challenges is disloyalty from the elites. These elites, whether they are part of the ruling family, the military or the bureaucratic system, play a crucial role in maintaining the autocrat's power. However, they can also pose a significant threat. If they feel their interests are not being adequately protected, or if they perceive a chance for personal gain, they may turn against the autocrat, leading to instability and potential overthrow. Furthermore, autocrats must constantly manage opposition from the citizenry. While autocratic rule may initially be accepted during times of political unrest or for the promise of security, citizens often grow weary of the limitations on their civil liberties. This dissatisfaction can manifest in various ways, from peaceful protests to violent uprisings, all of which pose threats to the autocratic regime. Moreover, autocracies must also navigate challenges from the international community. Autocratic regimes often face diplomatic isolation, economic sanctions or even military intervention from democratic nations seeking to promote human rights and democracy. Now let's consider the fate of most autocratic governments. History tells us that they are typically overthrown by coups. These are usually orchestrated by disgruntled elites or military factions dissatisfied with the autocrat's rule. It's a stark reminder of the precarious nature of autocratic rule, where absolute power can become absolute vulnerability. Yet it's important to note that the fall of one autocratic regime often leads to the rise of another. This cycle underlines the resilience of autocracy despite its inherent challenges and its ability to adapt and persist. Despite its challenges, autocracy remains. It's a testament to the complex nature of governance and the diverse political landscapes that exist across our globe. To summarize or conclude, autocracy, a system that thrives on absolute power, contrasts greatly with other forms of government. Throughout this discussion, we've unraveled the intricate threads of autocracy, shedding light on its characteristics and how it differs from other governance systems like democracy and feudalism. We've seen how autocracy places power in the hands of a single ruler, an autocrat like Kim Jong-un, who holds absolute control over decision-making. Drawing parallels with other systems, we've dissected the stark contrast between autocracy and democracy. 
Autocracy is a system that has existed since ancient times and seen how it has evolved into different forms, including despotism, monarchy and totalitarian dictatorship. Finally, the challenges that autocracy faces comes from citizenry opposition to internal disloyalty from elites. Despite these challenges, autocracies can persist, often providing a semblance of security and efficiency. Understanding autocracy helps us to appreciate the complexities of governance and the various ways power can be exercised.